Okay, and so the last part of this this week's material uh, is actually a fairly simple point. Okay, uh, and the last point is that uh, that we're never going to have you know zero percent uh, unemployment, zero unemployment rate. Right, this never happens, and it never will. Right, it never happens, and it never will. Right, so typically, uh, what we call you know the natural uh, unemployment rate or rate of unemployment. Right. Right, what we call the natural rate of unemployment, which is the rate of unemployment we can sort of expect if everything's going well. Right, what we call the natural rate of unemployment is equal to something, depending on who you're listening to. So this textbook uh, says that the natural rate of unemployment is somewhere between five and seven percent. Okay, other textbooks will say it's somewhere between four and six. I've seen some go as low as three to seven. Right, uh, and so. You know, it, it's it's largely uh, a guess, right? But basically, the the intuition is that there is some amount of unemployment that we should expect that e to even exist uh, when when everything is great. Okay, when everything is fantastic, we should still expect some people to be unemployed. And and why is that? So why would that be like a good thing? Why would it be good uh, if people are unemployed? Okay, so again, we need to think about the types of unemployment that we're, we're experiencing. So if we have high amounts of frictional unemployment because everyone or lots of people are, are willing to leave their current job and go after some better job, that might actually be a good thing, right? If everyone expects that they can find a new job relatively easily, then that means there's lots of jobs available out there and there's lots of opportunities for people, right? And so they're just moving up and taking advantage of, of the new opportunities. And that's a great thing, right? Uh, but if, and so a high unemployment rate uh, might be beneficial. If there's tons of jobs out there, then there's just going to be tons of people uh, who are uh, remaining unemployed for a longer period of time because they're simply weighing all sorts of competing options. You know, imagine if, if every college graduate had a hundred job offers waiting for them when they graduated, right? Well, you guys would be unemployed for a little while just simply because you're spending all sorts of time uh, considering, carefully considering uh, each and every option, right? And trying to find the one that's best for you. And so a high rate of unemployment in that scenario would actually be a great thing, right? It'd be fantastic, okay? A high rate of unemployment uh, may may also be a cause for concern uh, if it's because people are having a hard time finding a job, right? And and that could mean lots of things. It could mean that we're heading into a recession, for example, right? Uh, but at the same time, uh, an an unusually low unemployment rate is also troubling. So unemployment of you know one to two or even three percent uh, might be. Uh, scary as well because what it sort of means is is that people who have jobs so all the people who have jobs are are unwilling to go and look for other jobs right they might be saying like oh you know it's really hard to find a job out there I better you know hunker down and, and make sure that I don't get fired right so I'm gonna you know put my nose to the grindstone and, and really make sure that I'm not the one that gets fired Okay, and and so in that scenario, a low unemployment rate would actually be a really bad thing because it says that workers are scared of their job prospects, and so they're basically insulating themselves where they currently are, right? And so understanding uh, sort of an unemployment rate that's outside of this range. So let's accept the text, this textbook's definition of five to seven. So if we understand that the unemployment rate below it is might be bad, and an unemployment rate above it might be bad, right? Or an unemployment rate below five might be good, and an unemployment rate above seven might be good, right? It's all context specific, 
So if I told you that the unemployment rate was equal to 12%, right? If, you, if that's all you know, you have absolutely no basis for knowing whether or not the economy is actually doing well, right? It could be the case, like I said, that it's 12% because lots of people are, are feel very confident in their abilities to find a new job and because there's lots of jobs out there. And so in that world, right, great, cool, 12% unemployment, fantastic, right? Or uh, it could also be the case that, you know, as it's been uh, since 2008, 2009, right, uh, high unemployment is caused by people being unable to find jobs, right? And that's a bad thing, okay? But just knowing this 12% here, that doesn't tell you anything, right? It doesn't tell you anything at all until <clears throat> you unpack it a little bit and look deeper than just this 12%, okay? Similarly, if I told you uh, the unemployment rate was, you know, 3%, right? You have no basis of knowing if that's a good thing or a bad thing, right? You have no idea. It could be the case that everyone's terrified about the future and so no one's willing to look, or it could also be the case that there's just lots of people out there uh, who have found great jobs, right? And so you need, in order to have sort of an understanding of how uh, the economy is doing, you need to have a bigger, broader understanding of, of what's going on, what's going into determining this number. So what factors are causing that 12%, right? And so like, what are all the things that go into determining that and what's going on that results in this aggregate figure of 12%, okay? Another way to sort of think about this is to think about um, like how how your weight is an indicator of your health. So if the unemployment rate is an indicator of how like healthy an economy is, then it must be the case that your weight is also an indicator of how healthy you are. And at some level, right, your weight is not a terrible uh, indication of of your health. Uh, so <coughs> so I always like to give the example. You know, I I'm currently six foot one. Uh, and I weigh about 217-ish pounds. Well, technically, I'm down to 205 now. I've been working out. Uh, but uh, before, I weighed 217 pounds, and I was six foot. And I still am six feet one. Okay. Uh, turns out, Adrian Peterson of the Minnesota Vikings uh, is also six one and weighs 217 pounds. Right. And so, uh, it would, but it would be false to conclude that you know Mr. Peterson and I are identical. Right. We're not, right? We're the same height and weight, uh, but I would submit that the composition or, or the things that go into determining, right, Mr. Peterson's weight versus my weight are wholly different. So even though, you know, both of us have this magic uh, 217, right, even though we both can be represented by 217 pounds, there's a difference between us, right? Clearly, uh, I am much stronger uh, than Mr. Peterson, right? Obviously, I'm not, right? So, uh, so, so here, right? There's a there's a difference, but even though both of us have the same number assigned to us, 217, there's a difference between us. Likewise, this 12 percent, right, can be the the result of of good things or bad things. And so, you need to, if you, <clears throat> excuse me, if you want to understand what's going on in the economy, you have to look deeper than this 12%, okay? So, so don't, uh, don't stop your analysis at the unemployment rate. Always make sure uh, to look deeper, which at some level uh, is what this year's Nobel Prize winner, uh, Angus Deaton, uh, won his Nobel Prize for. Uh, but I'll, I'll leave that to you guys to go look up uh, on your own.